boy of the area, and uh, he really inspired me. I watched his, uh, he um, worked with youth, you know, uh, really disappointed youth as well, and uh, played poetry, and um, I'm able to really develop their potential in them, so very, very inspiring, so we'll be hearing from them. Mr. Nathan was also our uh, co keynote speaker on uh, Thursday. And next, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. D.D. Delaney, who's also a <laughs> He's, uh, he has a vast experience in different foray of art, but um, he would like to introduce himself as a playwriter, but he's going to talk more about him. And third, I would like to introduce Mr. Philip Bordando, who's a very young and upcoming artist. And he's a playwriter, and he's also a director and the owner of his own um, art, art, artist, for, artist for Coffee Cafe. I don't know, I'm not saying that right, but he's going to introduce himself. And now I want to introduce Greg Henry, who just spoke to you earlier. <laughs> Greg Henry teaches art and ceramics, if I'm correct, at the Bristol Newport University. And uh, he also offered, as you all saw, he offered the workshop today. And he had been here, he was the first person to arrive at 9 o'clock, I believe, and stayed. This is now. And uh, this entire panel will be moderated by our youth division, Amanda Axel. So we're going to just uh, kick it off by um, you know each of us share a little bit of their own uh, you know, uh, journey in art as we take it, and once we get comfortable with each other, I'm going to start kicking off. Thank you. Um, I uh, actually uh, grew up in South Virginia, uh, you know, on a farm really, uh, so I, I, I've always been very in tune. Uh, Sorry, uh, I bought a good car. ventured out of that domain uh, under the teachings of uh, Mr. Carl Hankins, who was a martial arts instructor. Uh, and he really kind of uh, introduced me to a culture outside of the rural culture of suffering. And then I spent uh, two, uh, 22 years in the military as a, uh, as a, as a soldier of war. <laughs> and um, in all that time, though, I was writing uh, and discovering a different side of myself, yeah. uh, another type of soul that I talked about this yesterday. But uh, that's, that's my evolution. And so now, uh, through the Hampton Road Youth College and the Team for the Purpose, and a lot of other uh, really talented people in this, in this community, like uh, and, and, uh, Minerva, and just Everybody working together uh, to to just uh, enlighten a new generation of people about uh, uh, what it is to be aware of your of your environment, of people to love one another. So that's, that's, that's basically why. I longest of all. Uh, I learned journalism on the daily newspaper when I was in college. And then um, I went to graduate school and found that it wasn't for me, graduate school in English. So I dropped out. I happened to uh, be married at the time to my wife of the present day, 48 years. That amazes people, <laughs> including myself. <laughs> Um, I was a conscientious objector during the Vietnam War, but when it came, my number came up, I turned tail and ran and disappeared for a while until the age limit passed and uh, I couldn't resurface. So I was an underground hippie for four or five years and uh, participated in that culture and, uh, and that was transformative for me. I became a lover of nature because I spent a lot of time living outside. Um, and I um, brought it all back and um, began writing newspaper articles for an alternative paper and eventually found my way into theater. 
where I wrote something like 30 scripts, and they've all been produced, although not, you've never probably heard of any of them, uh, except maybe some that I've done here. I moved here in 1994 from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which was my hometown, uh, because I wanted to be near the water. I had no idea, uh, well, I had an idea, but I didn't really understand the full um, meaning of military presence and how you can't really live in this area without being constantly made aware of war. And uh, this kicked into my background in the 60s when I began to write for Portfolio Weekly. I wrote for them for 10 years. Meanwhile, doing theater, and uh, in uh, about 2005, maybe, I became exposed to the slam poets of this area. Um, you know, may, some of you may remember Queen Sheba, who left, but Godchild is still here, those people, and Nathan, too. Um, and I thought, well, I can do that. <laughs> uh, so I started to do uh, uh, dramatizing my own poetry. I started to write poetry and act it out myself. And uh, most of my poetry is on the subject of the natural world and its beauties and inspirations, and also uh, peace, war, anti-war, and so forth. Um, I consider myself somewhat of a visionary um, in the sense that I have had and still occasionally have visions. Um, and, uh, and I incorporate those into my work as well. So. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Philip Benango. Um, I was born in the Philippines, uh, in Mindoro, Philippines, and uh, my day job um, is that I work for Operation Smile, which is a uh, global children's medical charity that provides uh, free surgery for children born with cleft palates, cleft lips, and facial deformities, and um, that pays the bills. Um, but uh, my real true calling and true passion really is to cultivate creativity. Um, I've been around in this area um, since um, the early 80s, and I've produced and directed almost uh, well, over two dozen um, theater productions here, and I've written a couple of, of plays as well. But my true calling really is to, to help become a catalyst for other people, for other creatives. And I've worked as a graphic designer, I've worked as a photographer, and October of last year, 2010, um, I just happened to have my camera and I was strolling down Fifth Street in, in Park Place and just taking photos of textures and, you know, really pretty boring day and, and Saturday of, um, it was 11 to 5 a.m. And just taking photos, nothing really too special. And then I was stopped by this amazing sound of chimes that were just ringing through the air. And just amazing song just played on for five minutes and I was just frozen just in silence of this song just enveloping me, just raining on me like these ice cold daggers just piercing into my really you know, cynical soul. Um, and just listen to it. And I, I turned around to face the direction it was coming from, it was coming from the Park Place Methodist Church. And, and, and what laid before me was present day. It was 35th Street, it was present day. But I felt I was transported through a wormhole, even though I was still standing where I was. And I saw this vision in front of me of a street that was filled with people. There were no longer vacant buildings or, or abandoned shops. It was full of people, full of vibrancy, um, pedestrian streets, uh, street lights on, the marquees were turned on. It was an amazing, peaceful place to be a witness to. And the chimes were still ringing throughout all this. And finally, it was kind of transported back to present day. So it felt like I had a bit of a uh, Charles Dickens, you know, um, you know, moment there. Um, and where I was standing um, is in front of where my shop is today. And I felt in that calling where three simple words were to be here now. And so that became really the motivator for opening up an artistic coffee shop, was that you just never know who will cross your threshold and whose lives you know, you may, able, you may be able to transform by just having an open life, or just, just being open and having your lights on. So even though you know, we struggle every day to, you know, to rub our nickels together to keep the lights on, it's important to be an active agent of change within you know, your community just by having your doors open. You, do, you just never know who supplies your community. Hi, good afternoon. I am Greg Henry. Um, 
I'm, I'm a primarily a, a studio artist. I create uh, paintings, uh, sculptures, and I also do woodcut printmaking. So I'm, I'm pretty much a studio artist. And um, I was born in Guyana, South America, and um, I started making creating objects when I was quite young, about six, six years old. I usually tell this story. You know, Diana, we live in these sort of skilled houses because it's below sea level. And um, I have three sisters, and I would, I would be, um, being the only boy, I wanted to sort of get out of the house. <laughs> I didn't want to be there with my sisters. But, but also when you have the tropical rains, um, the <coughs> rain would run under the bottom of the house, and it would get all muddy, and then I would have to go upstairs. So I started cutting these little trenches through the yard to cause the water to run from one side of the yard to the next. And that means I could stay downstairs and I can play under the house. So I felt like, looking back, it, it looks like that's where my art community <coughs> started. I started making little boats and things that would um, run through those little channels. And then also, I um, when I got an allowance, I used to go up and buy, you could get Five little chickens, the puppy yellow chickens. You can buy five of them for one dollar, and I would raise them, and then, then eventually they would become uh, food for. Me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but that sort of moved around. I moved, came to the United States when I was 12 years old, and I lived in New York. And then after high school, I went to Ohio for undergrad, and then. And I've always wanted to be this sort of individual artist. You know, I'm going to be like all the, the big name artists that I admire. And also, I've been teaching for the last four years. And over the years, I've noticed that more and more so my students joy when they have success. When I watch a student um, come in and when they're shy and not making connections or having a hard time, and I would work with them, and we had a determination to work with a particular student or a group of students, and at the end of four or five years, they used to just a totally different person. So it's, I start to realize the importance of not only me being creative and making my own work, but also the importance of I just mentioned it, it seemed like it was a smooth transition. Of course, it wasn't. There was a lot of knocks in the head for me to realize that maybe I need to spend more time. Maybe I need to go. And this is a constant development and the ability to always learn something from my students in the classroom or outside of the classroom. So um, I, I don't know if I can cover all the bases, but um, that's what I'd like to say. Thank you very much. Also, I found out about uh, Phil Spot, Kerouac. Yeah. 
Yeah, and um, that's actually where I hang most of the time. So, <laughs> funny he's here. And uh, that's about it. You know, I'm just trying to help out with uh, the art scene and, you know, hopefully uh, get some people into it, more people involved. environment 